Hello and welcome to this video where we will talk about how to reduce the inferior turbinates in a safe fashion. This first case that we will be demonstrating is performed via an Elman radio frequency unit. The patient's inferior turbinate has been engorged with lidocaine. Saline could be utilized as well. These devices work best in a fluid-filled environment, and therefore this turbinate has been essentially swelled up with injection, and then we will treat it typically in the mid-portion of the turbinate, passing posteriorly, and then anterior inferior and anterior superior. You can see that there is a gel film roll, that curled piece at the superior aspect of the screen, that is tucked into the patient's middle meatus, as the patient has had endoscopic sinus surgery. We've completed that portion of their surgery and now we are working on reducing their enlarged turbinates. This radio frequency treatment works very well for patients that have what's termed rhinitis of recumbency. These are patients that will have nasal obstruction when they lay flat. So this is an opposite effect of your feet getting swollen at the end of the day. That's because your feet are below the level of your, of your heart. Typically during the day, your nose is above the level of your heart and therefore blood will flow out of your nose and your turbinates. But then at the end of the day, when you lay down flat, you can have blood engorging your turbinates and radio frequency can help combat that. We're also then out fracturing the inferior turbinate. So we're using a firm metal implement, in this case a Boise elevator, or a butter knife it's sometimes termed, or a Goldman septal displacer, and we first infracture the turbinate slightly and then outfracturing it, paying attention to the hinge area of the inferior turbinate where it attaches to the lateral nasal wall. We're careful to do this procedure after we've worked on the submucosal layer to avoid any small fragments of bone that could impede passing our radiofrequency probe below the mucosa. Note that coblation technology, as well as judicious use of electrocautery, can produce the same effect as the radiofrequency device. This is a different patient. We're looking at a CAT scan slowly rolling through and you see the patient's septum is okay, their sinuses are really good, but their inferior turbinates were large and obstructing the patient, and this patient actually was utilizing afrin to a great degree, and therefore their turbinates will be reduced, in this case, per microdebrider. So the microdebrider tip that we use does have a sharp edge on it, so theoretically you can use it to pass through the mucosa directly, but to be honest, I find it easier to utilize a 15 blade to first make a piercing cut through the mucosa and then actually creating a bit of a pocket with the sharp end of a caudal elevator. And through this pocket, I can more easily pass the microdebrider tip. Now of note, it's not described in anatomy books, but Patients seem to have some more of an invisible fascial layer. I believe it is at the level vertically of the patient's nasolacrimal duct, and one needs to actually pass through that layer to then be able to be in a safer submucosal plane posteriorly. It is somewhat firm at that area, and that area could inadvertently cause you to pass your instrument too medially, popping out of the mucosa, and you have to be careful not to do so. Now, it's important to recognize that when we use a microdebrider then below the mucosa, the microdebrider, in fact, is not removing bone of the inferior turbinate. When we have made our plane through the submucosal tissue, to be honest, we will have a opening that is frankly directly through the vessels in that region. And so when we use a microdebrider, for the most part, we're directing it laterally towards the bone 
and it will then remove the submucosal vessels that are between our microbreeder and the bone, but actually does not tend to remove bone itself. Up front, we will tend to turn the device medially towards the septum and do very short bursts of microbreeding to remove submucosal vessels that are in fact medial to our microbreeder. But again, that's done very selectively, very carefully, very brief bursts of pressing on the pedal to achieve that. Typically, we would also outfracture these inferior turbinates again after we have treated the submucosal component so that we will not indeed cause any small fragments that would then cause our microbreeder to hang up as we are trying to create a tunnel to remove the submucosal vessels. Removal of inferior turbinates via scissors, excising turbinates is not advised. That can potentially lead to problems such as dryness of the nose, crusting, or most significantly empty nose syndrome that is a issue of paradoxical obstruction as well as dryness and the sensation of suffocation potentially in these patients. We wish to avoid that. Thank you for watching.